Hello and welcome to the Unschooling Channel. Uh, between June 24th and 27th, 2010, I attended the 7th Annual Alternative Education Resource Organization Conference in Albany, New York. While I was there, I interviewed some of my friends, mentors, and colleagues so that we can get a better understanding of what is meant by unschooling. I asked them four questions. The first question I asked was, how would you define or explain unschooling? The second question was about unschooling's strengths. The third about unschooling's limitations. And finally, different people use different terms to refer to unschooling, so I just asked what was their preferred term for referring to a learner-centered democratic approach to educating uh, young people or anybody, really. Uh, so, hope you enjoy the interviews, and thanks so much. Bye for now. So how would you uh, define or explain unschooling to somebody? My simple definition is that unschooling is allowing your children as much freedom to learn from and about the world as you can comfortably bear as their parent. And that varies from family to family. Some are going to uh, be very liberal and others are going to be only liberal in certain areas and that's the beauty of unschooling to me. It's one of the strengths. What, what are the, some of the strengths I guess you've outlined. Well, well, the strengths of unschooling are obviously you're working with a child's um, ability that they want to learn something. So you're working with a willing learner. So that's one of the, the, the strengths. Another strength is that you're, you as a parent aren't you know, acting as the teacher who has to know everything and have everything planned in advance and know what's going to happen. And instead, you're a facilitator. You're learning alongside them using your experience and your, your more knowledge of the world to provide them sort of a map of where to go. But they're going to follow the map. They're going to do the walking. They're going to do the discovery. And that to me is a, a very big strength. You know, you don't necessarily know where it's going to go, but you're there with them to help. You know, you're not just, you know, Svengali saying, go forth and learn math. <laughs> you, know? you know, use this textbook, follow this, this procedure. Um, and then finally, well, I, I could go on and on about strengths, but uh, I try to limit it to three. And the third one is it promotes family unity, um, in a, in a, even a, in a single child family, because unschooling necessitates dialogue between the parent and the child and the, and the larger community. Um, what, you know, in order to find out, like, the child has an interest in working with animals, and you know nothing about animals, the two of you go out into the community and find what resources there are and go from there. And that's a bonding experience. You know, you're not the teacher from whom all knowledge pours forth and then, you know, you're just sort of an ATM of knowledge, a kid, you know, dispensing to kids as they punch their numbers in. Instead, you know, you're, you're modeling learning behavior for them. And I think that's very powerful. Um, if your children see how you respond in situations that, that you don't know how to respond, you know, respond, you're giving them a very important lesson. This is how we learn something that we don't know anything about. And then how about uh, limitations? Limitations of, of unschooling are too much focus on the child. I think a really important thing is a balance between being me and also us. To use a, a book that I, I like from the 80s by Alison Stalabras. Um, uh, I've seen Matt Hearn and Grace Llewellyn in interviews talk about it. In fact, I think this is in print where they talk about, like, you know, they notice the, the current crop of unschoolers seem a little more self-centered than what they've had in the in the '90s, and that they're not as, you know, involved in community activities, more introverted with the computer and me, me, me sort of stuff. So, I, and I think those criticisms are valid because, of course, if you're the center, if you're having a, a a self-directed learning experience that suddenly becomes completely ch child-centric, you know, if, if, if around me and my interests and nothing else. That has benefits, but also has the danger of making you selfish and introverted and just focused on yourself. So I think that that's, that's one of the dangers, is you really do have to try and balance it in, you know, by modeling behavior that gets you, I mean, you know, if you're agoraphobic, it's kind of hard to be a homeschooler, but I must Say, I've worked with a mom who was agoraphobic and she was able to help her child get out as a child did not suffer from agoraphobia. So it is possible, but you need to make the effort. If you just think, oh, I'm going to unschool and they're going to follow whatever they want and whatever interest they have, I'm just going to feed that and that's that, 
I think that, that you're, you're missing an important part of the picture, which is also they need uh, a development that, that is social and that involves an outreach to a larger community besides the family. But first, you start with the family. And then from there, it's concentric circles. Then it's your local community, then your, you know, your community outside that, and then perhaps college or you know, moving away, travel. Um, I think that travel is a really important thing and a strength of unschooling that um, you know, a lot of families do take advantage of. And that's one of the strengths of unschooling and homeschooling overall is a family can travel. We, there have been stories of people on sailboats and stuff like that going away for, for a year or more. You know? So um, all, all, all this is a way of saying that if you're not aware of the larger world and where your child and you fit in the larger world, you do run the danger of becoming too insular in school. And there are different terms that people will use to refer to a similar thing. So it could be natural learning or when your president talks about life learning. Uh, Gatto talks about open source learning, unschooling, of course. Are there any, is there a term that you're more partial to? Yeah, I'm, I'm partial to the term learning. <laughs> I think that, that it's a, a damn good word and it describes aptly what's going on. If you want to talk about school learning, okay. We know that that's a different type of learning. The adjective <laughs> is modifying learning. We know what's going on here. You know? But learning is something that we do from the minute we're born until the minute we die. And we devalue it by only emphasizing school learning. 